No debt to fall tomorrow, or at least we think. That's all thanks to another 11th hour DC deal. All that's left now is the voting and a signature from the president. We've got a lot coming up this hour. Good evening. Welcome to RFL. So what's in this deal? Will it actually get through the Tea Party House? Who will claim victory tonight and who really won? We're going to get into all of that, but I want to bring in Karen Travers first from D.C. Good evening. There is relief here on Capitol Hill tonight. It's no longer a matter of if, but when Congress will vote to reopen the government and avoid a default. That's expected to happen sometime tonight, and then it will head to President Obama's desk for his signature. Just after 12 noon today, Senate leaders delivered the highly anticipated news. The compromise we reached will provide our economy with the stability it desperately needs. It's my hope that today we can put some of those most urgent issues behind us. The Senate leaders reached a bipartisan deal that should end the more than two-week government shutdown and avoid a default. Speaker John Boehner said House Republicans would not block the deal. We fought the good fight. We just didn't win. Republicans waged a lengthy, bitter fight with Democrats and with themselves. But in the last few days, they waved the white flag. Texas Senator Ted Cruz rallied conservative Republicans into a fight over Obamacare that led to the government shutdown. Today, he conceded. There's nothing to be gained from delaying this vote one day or two days. The outcome will be the same. There was a lot of backslapping in Congress as lawmakers declared this an historic agreement. But it's not a long-term solution to what was a self-inflicted crisis. The government will reopen, but the funding only goes through January 15th. The nation's credit limit will be extended, but only until February 7th. There will be no major changes to the president's health care law, the main Republican sticking point that sparked the shutdown in the first place. There will be new deadlines in just a few months. President Obama said yesterday he didn't think Republicans would try this play again, but already there are strong indications that Republicans are gearing up to fight the next round. Reporting live from Capitol Hill, Karen Travers, ABC News. Now back to you. All right, Karen, thank you very much. Now, with so many moving pieces in all this, we want to get you an insider's view on the activity of both chambers tonight. We'll talk to both the member of the House and the Senate. First up, the House, which remains something of a question mark tonight. Now, all signs point to House Republicans playing ball in the deal, but we've seen a lot of uh, surprises in the end game, haven't we, before? Well, I spoke with Jim Himes, Democratic Congressman from Connecticut's 4th District, just a few minutes ago. And we're very pleased to be joined from our nation's capital, from a good friend of the program, Congressman Jim Himes, Democrat from Connecticut. Congressman, um, first of all, should I be comfortable that I can exhale here that we averted the cliff or is that a little premature? Well, I, I, I think you can be comfortable. Look, there's still two houses that need to vote, uh, but uh, that is scheduled to occur in the next uh, three to four hours. We anticipate having this done and with any luck, the president will be signing this and ending this nightmare. Uh, in the next five or six hours. Uh, you know, as you know, Ted Cruz and Mike Lee and that gang over in the Senate have said that they won't, uh, they won't stop it. Uh, you know, Boehner is supportive. So, I, uh, again, you don't count your chickens till they, ha till they hatch, but I think we're in good shape. I know it's just accounting, but I think it's going to be instructive. Do you think a lot of Republicans vote for this, or do you think just the bare necessity here uh, come on board with what I would assume is almost every uh, Democrat in the House? You know, I, I, that's going to be a really interesting question, and I wouldn't necessarily assume that every Democrat will vote for it. I do think, you know, there's been strong unity in the Democratic Party, but do remember that we're talking about a budget level here, the extension of a budget level here that is, that is deeply uncomfortable. It's a, it's a level of spending below the Ryan budget. Uh, I can't tell you that many people around the Capitol like it, so I do think the Democrats will hang together, but I wouldn't entirely rule out, you know, a couple of people just saying, you know, the government can't run at this level. On the Republican side, it's pretty interesting, you know. Um, I actually think this may be a moment where a number of Republicans who don't live in those very safe, very deep red districts use this vote as a mechanism to say, look, I was part of putting a stop to a two-week experience, which really badly damaged the country and, you know, hurt an awful lot of families. So we'll, we'll see. I think my own guess would be you're, you're going to see more than the requisite kind of 20, 25 Republicans that we need to pass this thing. You know, we were hearing accounts and it kind of echoed what we thought that the speaker was trying to herd cats um, in the 11th hour with this whole process that went so south. Do you think the fever has been broken here? You guys are going to have to revisit this in January and February, and again, on budget. 
Oh, we just um, lost that conversation uh, with the congressman. But he went on to say here that he believes um, that there's a chance, a slight chance here, that there might be a fever that's broken um, in the House between the Tea Party Republicans and those Republicans who never believed this had a chance, who, who resent the fact that really Ted Cruz and Mike Lee brokered this with false promises that they could deliver at the end of the day the votes. So he said it'll be interesting what the final vote is. I think he's right. It'll also be interesting which Republicans are going to say, I don't want to go through this all over again in January and February, when again, the issue of keeping the government open and also revisiting the idea of the debt limit will come up yet again. So will it break the fever or not? That's something certainly uh, that we're getting into right now. All right, so that's the House perspective. Uh, in a little bit, we're going to be hearing from the Senate here and whether or not this deal will not only come together, but if a fever has been broken there as well. There was a lot of collegiality um, in the Senate today, people pointing to not only each other, but especially some of the female members in the Senate um, as to whether or not um, we actually not only averted a crisis, but made a breakthrough of sorts where the Senate said, not again, we're not going to go uh, down this road or see this movie uh, one more time in the fall. We're going to work this out. Uh, bipartisan out of necessity, maybe, but nonetheless, uh, folks are hoping that it will work. Now, as we um, get our phone set up with uh, Senator Casey from Pennsylvania, uh, I also want to tell you we're going to be talking about other politics this hour of the local variety as well. As many of you know, it is election day in New Jersey today. Special election here to fill the seat of the late Frank Lautenberg. Cory Booker, as well as Mr. Lonigan, uh, campaigning as we speak here. Polls will be closing in less than two hours. We'll get live look-ins there for that race. And big night in debates last night, both in New York City. Uh, we had the mayoral debate, and in New Jersey, we had the gubernatorial debate. And there were some fireworks and some interesting ads as well. So we're going to be getting to all of that. Plus, we're going to be talking about winners and losers. And I know... I think we as a country were losers through this whole process about what went down in Washington for the last few weeks. But nonetheless, where this goes from here, and yes, next year are the midterms, and trust me, there will be political consequences one way or the other. All right, let me bring in the Senate perspective in this. And for more on that, we're very pleased to be joined by Senator Bob Casey.